Um, in today's video, we will be looking at the finite element analysis of heat transfer through a hollow cylinder. Primarily, we will be looking at the governing differential equation and its derivation, after which the problem needs to be analyzed will be studied. We will then look at the conventional methods to solve the problem using the heat transfer approach and the analytical finite element approach. This will be followed by the ANSYS steady state thermal analysis and be concluded by comparing the results achieved by all the three methods. The general governing differential equation for conduction and cylindrical coordinates is shown. However, by assuming the heat transfer to be one dimensional steady state, the material properties to be isotropic and no internal heat generation, the above equation reduces to as shown below. By integrating the equation twice, we obtain the equation defining the temperature profile by applying the appropriate boundary conditions. We get simultaneous equations that can be solved to get to the, the values of unknowns. These values are then substituted back to the temperature profile equation, which is then further substituted in Fourier's law of conduction. Simplifying the equation appropriately, we arrive at the equation, which represents the total heat transfer, and can find out the equation for thermal resistance. Now we'll look at the problem which needs to be analyzed. Consider a hollow cylinder having a thermal conductivity of 60.5 watts per meter degree centigrade, carrying a hot fluid at a temperature of 200 degrees centigrade. The external walls of the cylinder are exposed to convection occurring at 22 degrees centigrade, having a heat transfer coefficient of 50 watts per meter squared degree centigrade. The dimensions of the cylinder are given below. Thus calculate the external wall temperature and the total heat transfer occurring in radial direction. By fundamentals of heat transfer, we know that the total heat transfer is equal to the ratio of the temperature difference and the total resistance offered during the heat transfer. The problem can be split based on the mode of heat transfer as shown in the figure. The resistance to heat transfer for conduction is found using the formula derived previously, and for convection, the equation is like the case of heat transfer through a slab, but here the area is changed accordingly. Thus, by knowing the mode of heat transfer, we can easily find out the resistance as shown. These resistances can be used to find out the total heat transfer and then subsequently the temperature at the outer surface as done in heat. Transfer through a slab video. The elemental FEA matrix is as shown in which K is the stiffness. The stiffness is the reciprocal of the resistance, which differs depending upon the mode of heat transfer. Thus, right by splitting the problem based on the mode of heat transfer, we can find out all the elemental matrices. We form the global matrix by combining all the elemental matrices. After applying the appropriate boundary conditions, we can solve the global matrix and convert it into a system of linear equations. By solving these equations, we can find out all the unknown interface temperatures as well as the total heat transfer. Now we will look at the ANSYS workbench for the simulation. First, drag and drop the steady state thermal module into the workbench. Go to engineering data and edit the material properties to match the problem. However, this time there is no need to change the thermal conductivity. So now go to design model or change the units. We can create the geometry using two different methods. The first method employs the use of extrude and Boolean tools. Use the primitives option to be able to directly make a cylinder of desired cross-section and length as shown. Do not forget to change the operation to add frozen. Create another cylinder similarly of a smaller radius given as per the dimension of the inner radius and use the slice material operation. Now use the Boolean tool and subtract function to subtract the smaller cylinder. 
from the larger cylinder to create a hollowed cylinder. Click on generate. The second method uses revolve tool. Draw a sketch using the dimensions and then revolve this sketch using revolve tool as shown. Do not forget to change the operation to add frozen. Click on generate. Always check material assignments. However, we are dealing with only one part and material there is no need to do so in this case. Generate a mesh of 1.5 millimeter with its behavior is hard by using the body sizing option and clicking on generate mesh. Apply the temperature to the interfaces by using the temperature boundary condition tool and setting its magnitude as 200 degrees centigrade. Apply the convection to the necessary faces using the convection boundary condition tool. Specify the heat transfer coefficient as the film coefficient and specify the ambient temperature. Please be mindful of the units when applying the film coefficient. To determine the temperature, use the temperature tool and select the appropriate face for the respective temperatures as shown. For finding out the total heat transfer, use the reaction probe with the specified convection and temperature as the boundary condition. Click on Solve. Thus, we have all the results we are looking for. All the results are tabulated as shown. Uh, the results of the FEA matrix method in ANSYS are matching the analytical approach with good accuracy and the following are the references that you can use for further reading. Did you think about how the elemental FEA matrix is derived from the general governing differential equation for today's video? Uh, for any doubts and suggestions, uh, please do comment in the comment section. Thank you for watching, and we'll meet in the next video.